The goal of this week's lab is to examine um, cells. We're going to use the microscope to examine cells and we'll be looking at various microscopic techniques to examine a variety of different cells. This is the microscope we'll be using. This is a bright field microscope. Bright field microscopes begin at the bottom with a light source. The light source shines light up through the substage. There's a condenser that basically focuses light. The light passes through an object, then goes directly through. It's transmitted up into one of these structures, which are called objectives. It then goes um, through this tube, bounces off a mirror, hits the um, ocular, and it's magnified again by this lens, which is a 10x ocular. Here we have various objectives. We have a 4x objective now in place. We always want to start with our lowest magnification in place because then it's easy to move things on and off the stage. We have a 10x objective, a 40x objective here, a 40x objective here for something called phase contrast, which we are not going to look at, and a 100x objective up here. Okay, so our 4x objective is in place. If we have a 10x ocular and a 4x objective, 4 times 10 is 40x. That will magnify a slide by 40x times. Our 100x then is our maximum. Our 100x is designed to be used with oil. We will use the 100x at the end when we look at bacteria. That 100x then times the 10x ocular is 1000x. Now we also have a camera attached. This camera then goes right into the eyepiece. So we basically take this eyepiece out, put this camera in, and we have it hooked up to a computer. We can get a live image of the computer. So everything that I see in the microscope, you will see on um, this computer image, and you will get a nice live view of exactly what's going on in the microscope. For example, here's a slide that I made up. This will be one of the slides that we'll be looking at later in lab. We'll just throw it in here really fast so that you can see what's going on. And we'll focus it, kind of move it down a little bit, put some stuff in the center that looks cool. Then what I can do is easily switch to a higher magnification, focus it, okay, center of the object, there's actually several things on here which are pretty neat, I just have to choose one, center it, focus, alright, then we could center it again and look at various objects. Okay. okay, the first technique we want to do is a wet mount. To do the wet mount, we're going to use it to look at plant cells. So our plant cells are going to be off of the leaves of this plant, which is Elodea densa. And first step then is to take a chem white, make sure that my microscope slide is totally clean. So I'm going to clean off that microscope slide really well. Then I'm going to reach in here. We want a teeny tiny leaf off the top. So you get a little leaf right off the very, very top of that. And we just want one leaf. We'll put it down and stick it down on there. And now I'm going to take my eyedropper, get a drop of water, put that right on top there. Now I'm going to grab a cover slip and gently put the cover slip, whoop, we just want one cover slip, not two. Gently put the cover slip down on top. And here is our wet mount all ready to go. Okay. So here is our leaf. This is under our 4x magnification. So total of 40x magnification, our 4x objective. See those little bricks? Those are all cells. It's green because it's photosynthetic. So we'll move in. A little bit more. We'll focus this. Okay, you can see a little bit of movement there in the very center. The very center, that's vascular tissue. So xylem and phloem going through the center of the leaf. Then to either side, those are all your leaf cells. You can see it has many layers on it. Okay, we're going to move up to the 40x objective. We're going to get it in focus. Ooh, nice. So here we can see under the 40 x objective really nicely. Now over here we have a nucleus. So you can see that nucleus right there in the dead center in the middle of that cell. 
Okay, so right here, let me move the nucleus in the middle. Oops, I moved it too far. There it is. So that's a nice nucleus. Okay, so in here, each one of these bricks is a cell. We have really nice chloroplasts. All the little green things are the chloroplasts, which are the photosynthetic structures. That bubble in the center is a nucleus. Now, if I focus in and out, you can kind of see how the chloroplasts are smashed to the outside of the cell. So you can make out, we can't really see a membrane or anything, but we can make out that there is something big in the middle smashing those cells to either side. I'm going to go back out magnification. I do want to look at something here. We're actually going to look at this vascular tissue. So I'll put this vascular tissue dead center. We'll go back up to the 40x and we'll refocus on the vascular tissue. And cytoplasmic streaming is basically um, the process of these chloroplasts them moving all around the cells. If I can get this in focus. Because we can see all those chloroplasts moving around those cells really, really fast. There we go. So we can see that cytoplasmic streaming. That cytoplasmic streaming definitely shows off that central vacuole right in the middle. Okay. We can see cell walls clearly here. See those cell walls. Membranes we can't quite make out, but the membrane is right on the inside of the cell wall. So we're looking there. And we can see then that movement of the chloroplasts around that central vacuole really, really well in there. Okay. I'm going to go back out magnification. I think we'll move over a little bit back to where we were. On these cells, we'll go back up to 40x. And we'll get these guys in focus. Okay. Now we can't see a lot in here because um, this is um, bright field microscopy, and bright field microscopy washes out a lot of small transparent things. The light has to hit it just right to be able to visualize. So right there, we can see that nucleus in the center of that cell. But if the light hits it wrong, then we won't be able to get a good view of that nucleus. Now what I'm going to do is go under oil immersion. We'll show you how oil immersion works in a couple minutes. But to start with then, I'm going to switch between the 40x and the 100x objective. I put a drop of oil right on the slide itself. I wheel in the 100x objective, which is an oil immersion objective. And then we can see the nucleus up close. So that's a nice view of that nucleus. Every single cell is a nucleus, but we can only see it because the light's hitting it here. Now there are also little teeny tiny dots in there. Those little teeny tiny dots the size of bacteria, way, 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 way smaller than the chloroplasts. Those are mostly mitochondria in the cells. Okay, and we can see those chloroplasts moving all around. So cell wall, cell membrane, chloroplast, um, nucleus, a few mitochondria in there, and central vacuole. Very good view. Next we want to look at human cheek cells. So in order to look at human cheek cells, I have a variety of items. I have a microscope slide. I have toothpicks that I'm going to use to get the cheek cells off of my cheek. I have a stain called methylene blue. I then have a staining tray that we're going to use to stain the slide. And I have a Bunsen burner to do what's called heat fixing the slide. So the first step is to basically take a drop of water. We'll put a little teeny tiny drop of water on the slide. I'm then going to grab a toothpick. I'm going to rub it on the inside of my head. So all on the inside of my cheeks, I get all kinds of cheek cells on that toothpick. Now I'm just going to then take the toothpick, circle around a nice big circle there so that it quickly evaporates on that slide. Okay, now as it's evaporating there, I'm going to just set it up here on the staining tray. We'll move this wash bottle out of the way there while you're looking at it. Okay, 
And now that my slide is dry, it's time to do what's called heat fixation. Heat fixation is basically taking the Bunsen burner, allowing heat to go on the bottom of the slide so that the cells stick to the slide. Later on, I'm going to add a little bit of methylene blue, then we're going to wash it off with a wash bottle. And we want to make sure that the slides don't, the cells don't slide off. So to start with, I'm going to light the Bunsen burner. Okay, we'll get a nice flame going. You see that nice cone on that Bunsen burner there? I'm now going to take my slide, I'm going to just go over slowly twice over this slide, counting one Mississippi each time. I'm going to angle the slide away so when the flame hits it, it goes that way. You know, a lot of people use clips so that they uh, are a lot farther away from their fingers. So we're just going to go one Mississippi, one Mississippi. And put that there, and then we'll be set. I'm going to take my methylene blue and cover the slide with methylene blue. And care of this smear with methylene blue. Alright. Let's smear that. We'll get covered with methylene blue. We're then going to wait for a minute, and after a minute we'll wash it off. And the methylene blue has been on for one minute, so I'm going to um, wash off the stain. So I'll just take my wash bottle, my slide, angle it down, and just simply wash all of that methylene blue off. By heat fixing over the heater, then my cell stayed on when I washed it off. Now all I have to do to finish this off is just basically blot it dry with Kim wipes and then I can look at it underneath the microscope. Okay, now we want to look at the cheek cells. So here's a view under the 4x magnification of the slide that we just made with the cheek cells. This, these cells are stained with methylene blue. We can see little itty, itty bitty teeny tiny cells in there and each of them have a little black dot. That little black dot is the nucleus. I'm going to shoot up under here the 10x. We can see them a little bit better. Okay, then I'm going to go up here under the 25X. It's a little bit better. Finally, then we'll move up to the 40X. Increase the light to increase the resolution. And focus so we can see these cheek cells under the 40X objective. Actually, we can see them really clearly here. So there's a nice cheek cell here. The little blue dots are actually bacteria on the cheek cell. We're going to look at those in more detail if I can move this gently. And we can see the, that cell right there. Okay. Now what I want to do is, is if I'm going to go up under oil to look at this, then I need to get that exactly in the center. So there's our cheek cell, it's under our 400x magnification. We're now ready to move to the next step, which is going under. To go under oil on the microscope, what I'm going to do is I'm going to swivel halfway between my 40x and my 100x, put a drop of oil directly on the microscope slide, then swivel in my 100x. This is my oil. I'll open my bottle, swivel this halfway between those two, and then put a drop right on the microscope slide itself. Now I'm going to swivel in the 100X. Once I'm under oil I can never go back to the 40X because this is not made for oil whereas the 100X is. Oil is designed to make more light. As you increase um, magnification you need more light to increase the resolution to actually be able to see a cell. So we need that oil on there to have enough light to visualize those cells underneath the scope. Okay, so here's our cheek cell under the 40x objective. I'm going to take it under oil, so I put it halfway between the 40 and the 100x objective. I'm adding a drop of oil to the slide. And then I'm going to wheel in the 100x objective into that oil. Very, very, very gently um, focus. Okay. And I'm doing too well at getting the 
focus, there we go. I have to slow down on that focus. Really good. Beautiful. There we go. Nice. So the bigger blue dots then are the nuclei. So we can see one, two, three nuclei in this image. So there's three cheek cells kind of on top of each other. Then you see all those nice little blue dots. Those are the bacteria um, in the sample. So a lot of bacteria on these cheek cells. And you can see the um, So we can see all these tissues, so I gouge my tissue really well. And then we can get that, those bacteria. So bacteria have a variety of different shapes. You can see a lot of different shapes in here. You can see some are, most of them look like very small rod shapes. A lot of them are in pairs, so you can see how they're in pairs of two. We have a chain in the upper middle, kind of a string of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them there. Um, we have a couple ones that are a little rounder, which are called cocci, which are rather than rods. Most of these are small rods, but there are a few that are a little bit cocci shaped. So a whole variety of different ones. You can see how big the nucleus is, right? And then a cheek cell is a lot bigger than the nucleus. So bacteria, you can see how tiny they are compared to the eukaryotic cheek cells in our mouths. Now the next amount I want to make is of what are called ciliates. Ciliates are different than amoeba in that they move by cilia rather than pseudopodium. We'll examine that under the microscope. So here's my culture. This is of mixed ciliates. Again, it's from Ward's Biological Supply Company. It has a lot of ciliates inside. I'm going to turn it around this time so you can actually see all the debris in the bottom. These guys, again, are heterotrophic, so they're hanging out in the bottom. And what I want to do is I want to get in and carefully suck up the muck off the bottom. I'm actually going to drop a few drops out so I really get the muck when I put it on the slide. Okay, there we go. Again, I'll put the lid on. Don't totally screw it on. And we'll get a cover slip. You have to be careful that you don't get more than one cover slip. The mistake a lot of students make is by getting more than one cover slip. There we go. And our wet mount is ready to be viewed with the microscope. The cilia we're looking for in the culture is this guy, a paramecium. Now the key problem that paramecium have in fresh water is that water um, enters their cells through osmosis. And so it passively enters the cells, so um, paramecium have a structure called a contractile vacuole. So in this video you can see the contractile vacuoles fill and then empty and expel all of that water outside. So hang on and I'm going to view this in again in a second. So here's the view again of the paramecium. You see that contractile vacuole. It's full. It is now going to release. There it goes. And it just released the water from the inside. Here we'll watch it fill up again here in a second. There it's full. There you can see another contractile vacuole right there that's full. And it's going to release there. It releases and all of the water is pushed out.